Okay, you got this, Barry. You're funny, you're handsome, everybody likes you, you're well endowed. You got this. Don't listen to what all the haters say. You got this. Don't cry. Just don't cry. Don't let them see you cry. Oh! Hello. I didn't see you there. I hope you didn't hear too much of that. Anyway, you guys know what it's time for. It's time for the Week 5 NFL Review right after this. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, DraftKings. A chill in the air, leaves falling to the ground, and football every weekend. That's what fall is all about. You can make each weekend even more exciting by getting into the action with my partners at DraftKings, the number one place to bet on touchdowns. And right now, all new customers who bet $5 will instantly get $200 in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up using my promo code BARRY. The crown is yours. That's $200 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use your $200 in bonus bets to bet anytime touchdowns on DraftKings. DraftKings is the place to bet touchdowns. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code BARRY and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code BARRY only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Atlanta versus Tampa Bay. The game started off like you'd hope. The Falcons scored a touchdown. The Buccaneers said, hey, suck my balls. I'm coming right back with another touchdown. The Falcons then missed a field goal before the Buccaneers kicker said, this is how you do it, Sonny, knocking it through to give them a three-point lead. But it was short-lived, just like an aborted fetus, as Kirk Cousins found another receiver for a score on third and 14 to make it 14 to 10. But the Falcons' lead was short-lived too, as Baker found Mike Evans for another score to go up by three. Young Wei Koo banged one through. Holy shit, that actually rhymes. I didn't do that on purpose, by the way, to tie it at 17. Before the Buccaneers scored yet another touchdown off of a long run to go up 24 to 17 at halftime. After the Falcons cut it to four with the field goal, the Buccaneers pumped it right back up to seven to make it 27-20 entering the fourth. Big Dick Kirk said, suck my nuts, bitch, and threw another touchdown pass to tie it at 27 early in the fourth, where the Bucks went up three. But a blocked field goal by Atlanta seemingly ruined their chances for the win, but the Buccaneers were in a giving mood as their running back stupidly fumbled the ball. I personally would not have done this, but then Kirk Cousins, being the generous guy he is, gave it right back, but the Falcons would get the ball back again, and Cousins got them into field goal range where they kicked the game-tying field goal to send it into overtime, where in overtime, Kirk Cousins threw a touchdown and motivated his receiver to get in the end zone to give the Falcons an unprecedented and unexpected 36-30 overtime win. Minnesota versus the Jets. It was a beautiful day in London. Holy shit, Aaron Rodgers threw a pick six to a white guy. What the hell is going on? Rodgers then proved all the haters who said, I bet you can't throw another interception wrong by throwing another interception in the same quarter, which led to the Vikings taking an early 17 point lead. But the Jets would eventually right the ship. Did, well, does that make any sense? They would eventually score 10 straight points before the Vikings pumped it back up to 10. I've been calling for Sam Darnold to have a regression game, and that's exactly what happened happened in this one as he looked like Jet Sam Darnold, but luckily for Minnesota, it didn't really matter because on the final drive of the game, Aaron Rodgers threw a terrible interception to Stephon Gilmore to seal the Vikings 23-17 win to improve them to 5-0. We all know the Vikings record is fake, guys, and we all know they're not going to do anything in the playoffs. So am I going to apologize for predicting that they were going to suck this season? No. Jacksonville versus Indianapolis. The winless Jaguars started off this game looking like they usually do, giving up an early touchdown and having to settle for field goals. But then Trevor Lawrence threw a long touchdown pass to Brian Thomas Jr. The Colts did a really awesome trick play, which only ended in a field goal to tie it at 10, before the Jags got another field goal just before halftime, thanks to a strip sack on Joe Flacco. After having his manhood questioned, Trevor Lawrence decided to throw a manly interception, but it didn't hurt the Jaguars on the scoreboard. They went up by 10 points. Joe Flacco was having a bit of a rough day, and it looked as though the Jaguars were going to win pretty decisively until Flacco threw up a touchdown on third and 15. Lawrence then had another beautiful deep pass, and as he released it, he was saying something like, is this good enough for you, Dad? Screw you! And then he threw a touchdown to put the Jaguars back up 10. The Colts kicked a field goal to make it a seven-point game. The Jaguars then ran for a super long touchdown to go up 14 with five minutes left, and this game was over. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. Flacco said, you forget that I won a Super Bowl once, and the Colts scored a quick 14 unanswered points to tie the game at 34 
before, but they left too much time for the 20th, 21st, 19th best quarterback in the league, Trevor Lawrence. The Jaguars then kicked the game-winning field goal to win 37-34 for their first win of the season. Chicago versus Carolina. The game started off with Andy Dalton transferring his will to win into Chuba Hubbard's soul for a long touchdown run to go up 7-0. But famous finger painter Caleb Williams was not going to take it lying down as the Bears put a can of whoop-ass on the Panthers, forcing fumbles, scoring touchdowns, including one on a gorgeous throw by Williams just before halftime to go up by 20. The Bears scored 30 unanswered points at one point before the Panthers kicked a super clutch field goal to cut it to 20 late in the third. The Bears then added another touchdown for good measure, as my wife's boyfriend, who also happens to coach the Carolina Panthers, shook hands after losing by 26 points. Washington versus Cleveland. Oh, you think Jaden Daniels is good? Well, just look at this goal line interception. Nah, 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 boo, boo. <laughs> but luckily for Washington, Cleveland is so dog shit offensively, it didn't matter. There were a couple field goals kicked, and the Commanders had a rushing touchdown to go up by 14 late in the first half. Deshaun Weinstein was once again horrible. It, it really is unbelievable how bad Deshaun Watson is. I say it every week seemingly, but he's just terrible. It's like he's not good unless he's committing crimes. It's really unbelievable. The game was officially over at halftime after Jaden Daniels threw a long touchdown pass, and the second half was really just cosmetic, with the Commanders scoring another touchdown, Watson throwing a hilarious interception. But to Watson's credit, he fought back to throw one of the most clutch touchdowns in NFL history on fourth down with seven minutes left in the game. That really shows you and tells you a lot about Deshaun Watson's character right there, folks. Without that touchdown, there's no way Cleveland would have lost by only 21 points. Houston versus Buffalo. A week after one of the worst losses in the Josh Allen era, the Bills were motivated to atone for their sins and, uh, well, yeah, yeah, it didn't exactly turn out that way. Josh Allen was 9 for 30. He's the first quarterback since 1992 to throw at least 30 pass attempts in a game and complete 30% or fewer of his passes. Yet, despite his shittiness and the Texans having a 17-point lead, the Bills rally back, scoring 17 unanswered points of their own, thanks to fumbles and interceptions by C.J. Stroud. The Bills even had an opportunity in the final minute to potentially get into field goal range to win the game, but with the ball on their own three-yard line, they stupidly called three straight pass plays, which were all incomplete, which gave Houston enough time to get into field goal range to kick the game-winning 59-yard field goal to give the Bills their second straight loss and improve the Texans to 4-1. and one. Maybe the Bills miss Stefan Diggs after all. Baltimore versus Cincinnati. Arguably the game of the year so far. The Ravens kick things off, no offense to Kareem Hunt, with a touchdown run by Derrick Henry. Joe Burrow had one of the best games of his career, throwing five touchdown passes. His first going to T. Higgins. I included this play because it's quite possibly the greatest fake out I've ever seen by a quarterback, even though it resulted in an incompletion. What? Seriously? This is freaking incredible by Lamar Jackson, who also, like Burrow, had one of the best days of his career. With a 14-9 deficit just for halftime, Burrow threw a long touchdown pass to Jamar Chase, his old LSU buddy, and tacked on a two-point conversion to go up by three at halftime. Burrow then threw another bomb, which set up another Bengals touchdown to give them a 10-point lead, but Lamar Jackson was locked in all day, throwing a touchdown down to cut it back to three. Burrow then said, anything you can do, I can do better, silly, which pumped it back up to 10. But Lamar said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of losing and I'm going to throw another touchdown pass to make it a three-point game again. But Burrow then had one of the greatest throws I've ever seen on a 70-yard touchdown pass to Jamar Chase to seemingly give the Bengals the lead for good. But then Lamar Jackson had one of the greatest plays I've ever seen any quarterback ever make, fumbling the ball, stumbling around, stiff-arming a defensive lineman, and then right as he was falling out of bounds, throwing across body touchdown pass to make it a three-point game. Burrow then made one of his only mistakes of the game at a pretty inopportune time, throwing the interception in very Tony Romo-esque fashion. The Ravens then tied the game with a field goal since he was unable to lead a scoring drive themselves, so we went into overtime, where Lamar seemingly had a game-losing fumble, which set up a game-winning field goal attempt by the Bengals, but somebody left the fucking door open in the stadium, and it caused the kick to go way wide. The Ravens would not mess up their second chance in overtime as Derrick Henry set up a chip shot field goal for Justin Tucker to give the Ravens a 41-38 win. And really, this is what Joe Burrow deserves for trying to cosplay as Cody Rhodes. I'm serious. Miami versus New England. Before this game, I predicted that the Patriots would win 10-7. And although I ended up being incorrect about that, for the most part, I was right about how terrible of a game this was. Unwatchable, as everybody could have expected in a game between
between Jacoby Brissett and Tyler Huntley. The teams missed a bunch of field goals. There was a bunch of punts. I think there was an interception along the way as well. Basically, it was a 60-minute course in how to make yourself look terrible offensively, but the Dolphins, towards the end, would eventually right the ship with a touchdown drive that gave them a five-point lead, which in this game is really paramount to like a 50-point lead. But surprisingly, the Patriots actually came close to scoring a touchdown as an answer, but it was out of bounds because the receiver's heel came down on the white line. Once again, no offense to Len Bias, Jacoby Brissett, once again, was unable to throw for 200 yards. I'm not going to have another rant on it this week, but it's really incredible that the Patriots just keep trotting him out there while their top three pick rots on the bench. There's no way Drake May could be worse than Jacoby Brissett. Arizona versus San Francisco. Well, there's obviously no need to review this game because the 49ers won. Oh, well, there goes Kyler Murray for a long touchdown run. Oh, well, it's not going to last. The, we all know the 49ers are going to chip their way back with a field goal and a touchdown. See, they add the lead again. Uh, well, okay, Arizona kicks a field goal to tie it. Well, that's not going to last long. See, they're going to kick the field goal and Arizona's going to get a kick blocked and it's returned for a touchdown. The 49ers are up by 10. See, so this game's basically over. You know, Murray throws an interception. There's no way that the 49ers are going to lose. They're up 13 at halftime. Okay, well, Purdy throws an interception, but that's fine because we all know that the Cardinals aren't going to win. They may kick a field goal, but who gives a shit? It's 10 points. All right, fourth and 23. I know the kicker's out, but kind of a weird play here, but whatever. Still up 10. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit concerned. Arizona's down only by two with 11 minutes left. 49ers don't have a kicker, and the 49ers are now fumbling. All right, now I'm kind of legitimately concerned. Fourth and five. Holy fuck, what a play. All right, I see what the 49ers are doing. They're just going to do this to rip the Cardinals' hearts out to give them a one-point lead. And, oh, fuck. Brock Purdy throws an interception. The Cardinals... Cardinals won? What the hell? This... What? Denver versus Las Vegas. The Broncos, knowing that I picked them to win this game, were extremely motivated, and they didn't lose faith after falling behind 10-0 early. In fact, it was I that motivated the Broncos to have this 100-yard pick six to tie the game at 10. From that point on, it seems like the Raiders just kind of died. Broncos went up by three at halftime, and then Bo Nix seemed to settle in the second half, throwing a touchdown. Then Gardner Minshew had a terrible interception again, which got him benched for Aiden O'Connell. This poor bastard did not want the ball thrown to him, but he was so open that it was thrown to him and he dropped it. Congratulations on the end of your career, pal. But thankfully for that asshole, it didn't matter because the Broncos won decisively, which hasn't been said very often since they won the Super Bowl in 2015. It's actually kind of insulting that the Raiders allow Aiden O'Connell to wear number 12 when the two best quarterbacks in the history of their team also wore number 12 in Kenny Stabler and Rich Gannon. Bo Nix still looks like quarterback from a CW show. Packers versus Rams. It's not very often you see Matthew Stafford lose a game. Well, actually it kind of is. But in this case, Jordan Love was all over the map. The Packers went up early 7-0. The Rams then tied it and then the game became a bit of a comedy show as Jordan Love threw one of the funniest pick sixes ever, which gave the Rams a six-point lead. The Packers, though, eventually course corrected and Love found super hard-working tight end number 85. There's like an 80% chance that this guy went to Iowa for a long touchdown to make it 17-13 Packers. This is just a rookie mistake by Stafford, but guess what? As he gets older and gets more experience, he'll learn to not throw shitty passes like that in double coverage, even though as a man, I must respect it because it's a manly arm punt. Unfortunately for the Rams, that just helped the Packers expand their lead into double digits, but the Rams would answer back with the obligatory cosmetic touchdown to make the game look more competitive than it actually was. They failed on the two-point conversion and got the ball back with a chance to win, but a shaky throw from Matthew Stafford to Cody Parkinson, get it? Shaky Parkinson? <laughs> it's, 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 eh, never mind. To seal the loss for the Rams, this is only the 111th time Matthew Stafford's lost an NFL game. That's really just unbelievable. It rarely happens. Sometimes I like to shove my fingers up my butthole. The Giants versus Seattle. After the Giants shit the football out of their butts and it was returned for a 100-yard touchdown early in the game, I thought the Seahawks were going to win this one by at least 30. But then Daniel Jones actually looked competent, which kind of isn't surprising, considering one week ago the Seahawks defense let Jared Goff go 18 for 18 while also catching a touchdown pass. Somebody in the stands told DK Metcalf that a foursome was going on, so he got distracted and fumbled this pass, which led to a Giants touchdown. The Seahawks responded with a field goal, but guess what? The only thing you're doing when you kick field goals is you're getting closer to losing. The Giants negated that, and then on fourth and one, Geno Smith took a sack, and the Giants kicked the field goal to go up double digits early in the fourth. The Seahawks finally responded with about two minutes left with a touchdown, 
down to make it a three-point game and got the ball back and got into field goal range with a lot of time left and a couple timeouts and it looked like they would find a way to right their sins or at the very least send the game into overtime but no they decided to get their field goal block to allow the Giants to win on their home stadium turf the Seahawks are an unserious franchise and they've been an unserious franchise since the millisecond they decided not to hand off to Marshawn Lynch at the one yard line in Super Bowl 49 all those years ago Dallas versus Pittsburgh oh wow field goal highlight oh wow another field goal highlight what's next a defensive turnover <laughs> uh, well yeah I guess yeah there is actually oh another field goal highlight wow this I can't believe this a Steelers game is boring as hell all right well the Cowboys in the red zone this has to be a touchdown oh wow it's another defensive turnover so it's six to three at halftime holy fuck finally some offensive production points touchdowns oh now we're back to field goals again oh now not even that because it's blocked we're 10 to 6 early in the fourth the Cowboys finally got back on the board but of course this being a Steelers game the Cowboys were legally not allowed to go up too much on them as Dak threw an interception Justin Mahomes then shovel past a touchdown pass to make it 17-13 but they left too much time for Dak Prescott and after a hilarious fumble on the goal line on fourth down Dak found some generic NPC receiver for the game-winning touchdown this is a legacy defining win for Dak Prescott after this game his playoff record went from two and five to now two and five Kansas City versus New Orleans Rasheed Rice's team facing a quarterback with the last name Carr <laughs> the jokes write themselves folks I fucking told all of you not to trust Derek Carr after the first two games of the season and look what happened now he's throwing terrible interceptions and getting hurt Kareem Hunt punched this one in for Mahomes did a Dwight Freeney-esque spin move on this incompletion that's actually hilarious unironically props to Chiefs fans for sticking with their team after giving up this touchdown it's so difficult to be a Chiefs fan right now how about this play Travis Kelsey throwing his balls back he has a lot of experience doing that with Taylor on a lateral on third and 22 the Chiefs ended up settling for a field goal not a touchdown but it was still pretty cool they then upped their lead to nine just before halftime insert joke about Harrison Butker going too far to the left for once here Alexa show me the 2024 version of the Malcolm Butler play from Super Bowl 49 I call this a thick pick get it because the guy is thick this is actually a really well designed touchdown play and throw to foster morale but unfortunately the kicker had to be a dick and miss the extra point which made it a three-point game Mahomes then fired this incredible tight window throw to doo-doo shit poopster who atoned for his goal line drop to set up this Travis Kelsey shotgun snap handoff touchdown Jesus Christ Andy Reid really gives zero fucks about the regular season at this point which helped put Kansas City back up by 10 then New Orleans's car broke down and left the game before the Chiefs expanded their lead to 13 on a field goal and that was really all she wrote the Chiefs are 5-0 and and it feels like they haven't played a single good game offensively all year and now it's time for the moment I know that all of you have been waiting for my week five awards the best throw of the week goes to Jordan Love for this unbelievable bomb down the field early in the game versus the Rams it also was an incredible catch to be fair I think Love kind of just threw it up there but still this had to have traveled 60 plus yards in the air incredible the worst throw of the week also Jordan Love Love avoided the safety by throwing this ball unfortunately he decided to throw it directly to the Rams defender and it was returned for a touchdown a pick six would have been better off just taking the safety there honestly but at the end of the day it didn't matter because Green Bay won you've asked for it and I'm bringing it back the Tom Brady check down of the week goes to Joe Burrow for his 70 yard touchdown pass to Jamar Chase this is really about as this is the essence of the check down of the week it's a quarterback getting monster stats for a throw where they barely do anything and this is what this play is and Burrow you know Burrow had a really good game he's having a really good season thus far but on this particular play he just let Jamar Chase do all the work puppy of the week once again goes to Scooby and as you can see in this photo he's just so excited about my weekly reviews he can't help it he just stands up on his hind legs and he starts waving his paws everywhere he's so excited for my weekly reviews just like all of you my Thursday night football preview between the 49ers and the Seahawks you got the 49ers they're a desperate and surprising two and three the Seahawks meanwhile are three and two I still believe the 49ers will win because the Seahawks defense is a joke although losing to Arizona at home is a big clusterfuck I still think they will find a way to win this game but it won't be in impressive fashion I say the 49ers win 31 28 on a late field goal to get back to 500.